Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Treat me right. My car started this morning because Matt Gibbs helped me out. I had a need for a new battery on Friday, and and uh, I don't think if I I don't think I would have been able to start my car if I didn't have a new battery this morning or yesterday morning, and clearly tomorrow morning. What's going to be the coldest? So, if you have a question about your car or anything related to it, uh, the number six two two nine six two two. Matt Gibbs is here. This show is called Auto Repair with Personal Care. Matt is the owner of Sunrise Automotive and Crossroad Auto Sales. Good morning, Matt. Good morning, Larry. So tomorrow you're going to get a lot of calls about batteries. <laughs> yes. I have you had a lot already? Uh, like we, we've we had uh, this last week. And I was one of them. You, you were one of them. I think we had a total <laughs> of about eight batteries this last week. So if a battery is going, is getting old or going bad, then the cold weather is when you'll really notice it yeah, the, yeah. the quickest, right? Yep. It's, it's crazy. Uh, so okay, so let me tell you what I told you off the aisle. Just say it again, so the the keep you know, catch. So the listeners know what we're talking about. Joe was saying to me, Joe Martone, that if I only drive, if a person only drives a short distance every day, okay, it does. The car doesn't have enough time to really re- uh, recharge the battery. Okay, and I only do four miles before I turn it off, and then I start it again, and I go back four miles. So, but you don't think that's a big deal? Is, is four miles enough? Well, look at it like this. The battery, okay, your battery in your car has a capacity. And that capacity, it's kind of like fuel. You put fuel in your car, you can put one gallon of fuel in your car, and you can put 20 gallons of fuel in your car. If you put one gallon of fuel in your car, and let's say your car goes 20 miles to the gallon, right? you're going to go about 20 miles, you're going to stop running, right? Because you're right. going to run out of fuel. Right. You're going to use up the capacity in the fuel tank. If you put 20 gallons of fuel and you get 20 miles a gallon, well, you can go 400 miles. You know, you, you oh, so the it. alternator puts in what it needs for four miles. Well, the alternator... In my case. Let's just say the alternator on your car is a 100 amp... Hey, Danette. Hey, Crystal. <laughs> How y'all doing? <laughs> let's, say your car, let's say your car has a 105 amp alternator. Okay? When you start your car... The alternator is capable of putting 10 amps of output up to 105 amps of output. So de- depending on where the capacity of the battery is oh, so determines it, how hard the alternator is So there's a, a computer or something that adjusts that? It knows, in other words, what I need? Well, there's what we call a voltage regulator ah. that regulates the amount of vo- voltage and amperage that goes into the battery. So if someone like yourself that doesn't drive very far, your alternator will work harder at keeping your battery properly maintained at its capacity. That's amazing, really. You know what I'm saying? Let me figure that out. It, it is. It's, it's, it's the whole, the, how the whole thing works is amazing. Has that always been the case, or like is that newer technology? No, we've always had... That one's been around for a while? Well, the reason that they originally came out with a voltage regulator was... <clears throat> We had, well, we started with generators and we transformed into alternators. And and we have to regulate how much voltage is going to come out of that device. So they they have a regulator to tell it, you don't want 18 volts going into a 12-volt battery. That will turn into a mess. Okay. So now when I was much younger and I had to get an alternator, which seems like I had to get one more often back then than I do now. They must make them better or something. They do. But you used to have to get two things, an alternator and a regulator. Well, some of the cars had an external regulator, and then I think it was GM that pretty much... Put them together? Yeah, modernized the alternators back in the day and went with an internal regulator. Uh, if you have a question for Matt, the phone number is 622-9622. I'm going to take a picture of you and, and put it on Facebook and all that stuff. You're going to take a picture of me with my allergies, my nose is you red, my eyes You can't see your are allergies. <laughs> <laughs> You will if you take a picture. <laughs> no, you can't see your allergies. Uh, so, so I'm really happy. I, I, it is so. I know we depend on our cars for so much. You know, I've been trying to walk more, and I think I could do it. 
the four miles. <laughs> but it's so much nicer to be able to drive it. I, uh, Joey was Joey's been doing a lot of training, and uh, it was funny because he asked me the other day if I'd go with him on this half marathon. Uh, okay, how far is it? Thirteen miles? <laughs> yeah, and I said, oh, I, you had to walk. I no, well, <laughs> and I said, why? I said, uh, can I can I drive a golf cart or something? <laughs> <laughs> why? Why was he? What was the answer when you asked him why? He was just, he knew he knew what my answer was going to be. So oh, he was, he was just, just kidding. He was just messing with me. Well, I got your picture, and I got your picture on here. So you, it's it's two. It's on the monitor and you. But there's a, a wire going in front of this face, <laughs> so you can see <laughs> the allergies. I see him just playing with my toys, which is battery operated toy, by the way. And and, th- and is this battery affected by the cold weather too? I don't understand something. When I was a, another thing, when I was a kid, if the batteries were going bad in the flashlight, you put them in the freezer, and then they came back to life. Yeah, but they came back to life for just a short period of time. Oh, really? But yeah. it seems it seems like the cold helped the batteries in in that case. No, I don't know. I, I never put <laughs> batteries in my freezer. Oh, you didn't? You didn't uh, never did that trick. Yeah. Let's go to the phone. Say hello. Good morning. You're on the air with Matt. Uh, Matt, I was curious about how to get the uh, corrosion off the battery terminals and uh, I'll hang up and listen okay thank you. thank you for the call well I use I use you can go to any of the local auto parts stores um, and they actually make uh, a spray that you do to, for cleaning the battery oh, really? terminals and then they have another spray after you get them all clean I always take them off spray them and I have a tool that will go like if it's a top post type battery. Right, right. Um, it has a you know a little device that cleans the inside of your terminal, and then also on top of the battery. And then after I get everything clean, you can you can uh, reinstall it, and then use another chemical that you can buy at your auto parts store that actually coats it, and and it's kind of an oil base that keeps it from corroding again. Does that those little felt washers do they help? Do, do they actually prevent it? No, they don't prevent it. Do you know what I'm talking about those things? That's, that's what they advertise. They yeah, have. I know, but I, I, we, we throw them away all the time because they're oh, so really? They, oh, really? Yeah. I mean, the old, the, old, the old thing with pouring a Coke on there, yeah. you know, people used to pour Coke on their batter. That actually, that actually works really well. And baking soda and water also works So really those little well. uh, red and green felt things. Right. I mm. throw them away. They get so nasty, I just throw them away after, you know. You have a phone call? Good morning. You're on the air with Matt. Uh, good morning, Matt. This is Sonny calling. Hey, Sonny. I uh, use the, uh, like, gasoline after I clean the terminals and put everything back together again. And I made sure to use, uh, you know, use it uh, quite liberally. And I had uh, pretty good success with that over the years. And the other thing now I have is those little, uh, are they red and green felt tips yeah. or washers? And you put that over and then put your connections on. And so far, it works. They seem to be working pretty good. But then again, I also keep the battery clean. You know, you can't let that dirt and stuff accumulate there because it could be a semiconductor. And then that'll bypass all your uh, efforts that you put in there to keep the terminals clean. Yeah, I, and and that's my I, experience. So have a good day. Guys. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good call. Well, one thing about one one thing about same thing Sunny, I was talking about those same things. Yeah, and but one thing about Sunny that that people have to understand is Sunny Sunny does what you're supposed to do with your car. He he takes he, care of it. He takes care of his yeah, car. Yeah, you yeah. know, he, and. Uh, and I and I admire Sonny for that. He he keeps his car well serviced and well maintained, and therefore, he has way less problems with his car than than a lot of other people have. With My theirs. role model too. <laughs> you know, you know, I know. But money is sometimes an issue. Does anybody ever tell you this? Sometimes. I mean, okay. Wait a minute. Let's just let's just let's just back up for oh, one second. You're going to compare it to what it costs to fix it, no, aren't no, you? No, 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 no. Okay. No, we're going to take Sunny. We're going to use Sunny as, as, as what he what Sunny just said. Okay. I didn't. Sunny didn't bring the car to me over at Sunrise, and we service his battery terminals. 
Sonny says. Oh, he does, he it, does himself. it himself. And but he, he doesn't how. go. Nah, do what? He knows how. Well, okay. <laughs> do I? <laughs> do I? <laughs> he also used Vaseline, <laughs> which is, Vaseline's fine. Uh-huh. You know, instead of going to the auto parts store and buying a can of this and a can of that, uh, because if you only service your battery once every once every year, you know, by the time you next time you need to service your battery, your your can of stuff is probably not going to spray out of it no more. Right, 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 right. Sure, yeah. So you know, we use it every day. So therefore, you know, but he used Vaseline, and it's just literally just taking something off, taking one screw out. But it can be dangerous if you don't know and if you don't feel comfortable because you don't want But wanna. that's the, the battery. There are other maintenance things, though, that's, that I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know what to do. Well, for instance, a lot of, thing, a lot of things that people can do that are, it is not mechanically inclined is they can make sure that they have the proper amount of air pressure in their tires. That's, 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 that's something I can do. You can e- I do even that. Even Larry I can do, do that one. That's what I do. Right. And, and, and what does that do? It, number one, it may, it's safer. And number two, it prolongs the life of your tire, you know. And it number three, it keeps you looking at things, you know. And right, if you right, see right, it right. Steel right. hanging out of right. a tire now. It's time to. So the normal things that I would do. Tell me if I'm missing something. I would do the tire pressure. Okay. I would do the water in the radiator. Okay. I haven't done that lately, but uh, I, I check the oil. I used to check the transmission fluid. Do I have that on my car now? Yes. Yeah, I do. So I haven't done that yet on this one. But uh, uh, what else would I do? You could check your washer fluid. Oh, but that's okay. But you, you, know, you okay. know when that's out because right. you try you can't wash. Look, at, you don't. You know, and you, you could check your brake fluid, like just to make sure, because you can see into your master cylinder and see if you can you can see the fluid there. Uh, if you see the fluid way low, that, that may indicate that you're having a problem. You know, a leaking wheel cylinder, or whatever, right. what have you, or oil in the driveway. Look, yeah, absolutely. Pay attention. If you see green stuff, you might have a coolant leak. If you see red stuff, you might have a transmission. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My brother used to tell me, who everybody in my family knows more about cars than me. Robin knows more about cars <laughs> than me. But, but if the smoke is blue, it means something. If the smoke is white, it means something. You is you agree? And if the bloke, if the smoke is black, it means something. <laughs> right? Yeah. It all means something. It right? all means something. <laughs> all right, we'll take a little break and be right back. Your calls are important. I see calls coming in. I'm hanging. I'm not ignoring you. I just know we're up against the break. So we'll take a break right now. Come back with Matt. The number is six two two nine six two two. We'll be right back. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. Sunshine on this Tuesday, but cool with a high of just 53 to 57. Mainly clear and cold tonight. Lows ranging from about 30 well inland to 42 along the coast. Wednesday, partly sunny and noticeably milder in the afternoon. High 62 to 66. But Thursday, some sun followed by increasing clouds. High 68 to 72. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. Enrich your life at Golden Ocala Golf and Equestrian Club. Here, century-old oak trees surround stunning homes, the finest resort-style amenities, and a stately clubhouse. Our exceptional golf course will host the 2016 Coates Golf Championship presented by r and Carriers. And here you can savor a luxurious lifestyle that's second to none. Call 352-369-6969 for more information on our available real estate options and to schedule a home tour. The play How I Learned to Drive is live on stage at the Ocala Civic Theater January 14th through the 24th. Lil Bit is an outsider and she feels an odd kinship with Uncle Peck, a charming southern gentleman, until he turns predatory and molests his young niece during so-called driving lessons in his Buick Riviera. This Pulitzer Prize winning drama is intense and at times shockingly funny. This play contains strong adult themes and language. Tickets are $25 for adults, $12 for students. At Ameris Bank, we understand that there is no purchase more exciting than the purchase of a new home. We are dedicated to helping you find the mortgage that meets your needs and giving you the personal attention you deserve. Our mortgage options offer a variety of benefits, including up to 100% financing, down payment assistance, and expansive credit qualifications, all with the competitive rates and exceptional service. Call Ameris Bank today or visit AmerisBank.com to learn more. We look forward to serving you. Ameris Bank is an equal housing lender and member of FDIC, all loans subject to credit approval. 
Hey, Ocala, this is Kelly Hart, executive editor of Ocala Magazine. Did you know last year, Ocala Magazine won more awards and excellence than any other publication in Florida? And this year, Ocala Magazine was named best consumer magazine in the state. Now you can join me every Friday at 10 a.m. on Ocala Magazine Radio, where we bring the pages of Ocala Magazine to life, right here on The Source. Ocala Magazine thanks you for making us number one. And remember, there is only one Ocala Magazine. One of the most common questions those nearing retirement are asking, will I outlive my money? Retirement questions like these and many more will be answered every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. on planning for a better and safer retirement with hosts Francois and Julian Cozanet. Francois and Julian will help you put your retirement puzzle together. Catch planning for a better and safer retirement Saturdays at 9 a.m. on Ocala's News Talk, the source 96.3 FM and 1370 a.m. (laughs) <laughs> that wasn't about cars. All right, we are back. Matt Gibbs is here. Matt made sure that I could start my car in these cold days because I brought my car to you on what Friday. Yep. And you said, hey, "What would you say? Come on, dude, it's late." <laughs> 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 but anyway, you sold me a new battery, and it's awesome because now I can start my car. Good morning. You're on the air with Matt. Thank you for waiting. Uh, good morning, Matt. Sunny morning. again. Uh, yeah, I don't do anything different than I guess anybody else except if I'm washing the car or I'm in the garage and I'm or pop the hood every now and then and just take a look. Yeah, and that's more than most see, people do, know, sonny. You see some <laughs> dirt starting to accumulate, I grab uh, one of those shop rags and wipe it off, that's all. No no big deal. And then I always check the oil. You know, uh, things the way they are today. You, you could uh, burst a valve seal or something in the engine, and next thing you know, you're burning oil. But either way, you know, it's just uh, looking, and uh, if you see something, you, if it looks a little dirty, wipe it off. The shop rags, you can go to uh, any uh, discount store and pick them up. Uh, usually they have them on sale. You know, you can get about uh, 10, 20 of them for a couple of dollars, five dollars, or whatever the heck the uh, sale price is. And when they get uh, disgusting, you just toss them. Uh, that's why I use those shop rags. But you know, it's it's I don't know. That's just uh, when you see something, you do it. And this way, if you're clean, wiping some dirt off, and that's another thing I always do is try to keep that top of the battery clean because like I said before you know the dirt will actually make a electrical path over the uh, Vaseline or those uh, little discs that you put around the terminals but other than that you know it's, to me it's what I do so anyway have a great day guys have a great day too but well, and and see he he makes it as as it's just no big deal it's run of the mill everybody probably does this but as you pointed out everybody doesn't do that and I'm one of those people that does it so I really need to do that though I don't ever open my hood no I, I mean I do like you know if there's steam coming out or something <laughs> <laughs> And, I, and 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 Larry, and, and, you know, Sonny's like everybody does this, but really they don't. And and it's just, but that is Sonny's personality. That's who he is. He's probably like that with his lawnmower and his car and his stuff, and he takes care of things. And and and. Uh, but that's a really great example because you know it's, it was kind of like it's kind of like knowing somebody who drives really perfectly, and you say, oh my gosh, I should. I mean, you're really better than me, and I should really drive like you. You know, but you're not. You're going to drive like you, and you're going to take care of not your car you like you. Conscious, and, consciously think about it, you know. Well, it's like eating right. It's like you change your habits, your lifestyle. Yeah, and uh, and and I would say the majority of the people, you know, they eat right for a little bit, or they do yeah, the right thing. Yeah. They do this for a little bit, and then old old habits are hard to break. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. and that's why I'm in. Man, them people out there are just getting, they're getting crazy. <laughs> if you guys could only see what me and Larry are seeing right now. Uh, but, you know, it's, and that's why I'm in business. I, I, I do these things to cars so people don't have to. <laughs> even if people want to, they still bring it to I can to put me. them on your show. I can put them on your radio show. 
there. <laughs> now they're on your radio show. Oh, are they getting yelled at? No, this guy's out here taking pictures of them. Oh, they're taking pictures. They're climbing all over them horses. <laughs> they better hurry up before the social security guards come out there. <laughs> social security guards are like that. They're like that. Oh, he's helping her. He's helping her. <laughs> he's a, she's almost, folks, she's almost <laughs> up on the horse. He, he jumps off the horse those, to help her get up. Those horses really are not stable. No, they're not. That one about came up on two legs. And yeah, they, they, they fall over. Those horses fall Uh-oh, over. Uh-oh, here comes this, here comes a mall person. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, <laughs> you're narrating what's going on outside the wall, outside the window. So is that a security guard out there? I'm nah, not that's just that. a... No. Delivery guy. All right, let's talk about you. <laughs> hey, this is this show. <laughs> uh, all right. All right, so uh, the cold weather tonight, are you going to have a lot of calls tomorrow about uh, batteries? Uh, I hope not. What, hope. what can somebody do tonight to make sure that their car starts tomorrow? Anything? Could you make it today just. Have the, get a check today. Have it. Get it checked today. But don't some people who live in colder climates sometimes put um, what? What do you call it? Um, like a trickle charge or something on them? Yeah, you could put a trickle charger on it, or some of the cars actually have block heaters, and you plug the car into the one. It keeps it keeps under the, you know, keeps the engine block warm. And, but we don't. We're not going to have that kind of cold. What I think what really affects our batteries is is one day we're freezing cold and the next day we get warm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the variation of temperature is really what 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 hurts our our batteries here. Well, and that's what we have fluctuations. Yeah, a uh, lots of fluctuations. We we may fluctuate what twenty thirty degrees in a day, you know, from the morning time to the mid afternoon. Yeah, so, that's what's happening today. As a matter of fact. <sighs> So, so, but a brand new battery, I'm okay with that, huh? You're good. With the <laughs> Does the cold weather affect anything else? Does it affect the starter or anything? Uh, not, not, not necessarily the starter, but it does affect other things. Really? You know, the belts and the hoses and, the, you know, just have your car checked. And Do you know what I wish I could change? The time it takes to warm up the engine. Because my heater, of course, only works when the engine is warm. Right. By the time I get here, it's finally warm, so I'm, I'm driving four miles in the cold. Well, so you should do like I do. What do you do? Start it up in advance? Uh, when I, when, yeah, when I get up in the morning, I get, I'm at my sp- certain spot, you know, like I, I know that I'm about 15 minutes away from... Right. Out. You start your car 15 minutes ahead of yeah, time? Yeah, I just let it... You go out and start it, or do I, you have I, a, I, a, a, a button? No, I, I run out and start it. Okay. In my shorts. <laughs> right there, start it. <laughs> so other people have these, these they can start it. While Remote the, starters, yeah. yes. Do, yeah. do you like them? Yeah. That's, that's a good that's idea? Handy. For that reason? The biggest reason. The biggest reason why I start my engine is not necessarily because I want it warm when I get in a car. Because I only drive, I drive less than you do to get to work from okay. where I live. All right. So the reason I want to do it is... I want the engine to, to have a chance, the engine to warm up. I want it to lubricate well, this, itself. Okay, address this, because I was told, like in the old days, don't drive your car until it's warmed up. I was told, don't. that's not true anymore. That's not the way new cars work. Don't worry about it. What's the truth to that? Well, the colder things get, it, it's all metal, right? The engine's all metal. So, And the colder that it is outside, metal contracts in the cold and expands in the heat. Right. So... I want to make sure that everything is fully expanded. I want it to be at operating temperature when I get in and drive it. Honestly, and I do that every morning. It's cold. Now, if it's if it's not cold outside, the metal's not contracted as much. Mm. If you notice, if you go out and start your car or when it's cold, real, real cold and you start your car, the first time you start it, you may hear some clattering, ticking, clacking going on Ooh, I hope I for a few seconds. Really? Yeah, and, and a lot of cars do. Uh, Chevrolet pickup trucks, uh, they, 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 they had a problem for years. They, they would have real bad engine noise when it was they started up cold. And, uh, and, and so I, I, I'm just one. I go out there, I warm it up, let it warm up, and then, and then I go to work. All right, well, tomorrow I hope I just start it up and come in here, and I'll think of you. I'll think Matt's getting a lot of colds right now. What is your phone number, just in case we need it? If you need to call me, you can call me at 352-690-1993. 
Sunrise Automotive, my mechanic, Matt Gibbs, also my car salesman. I bought it at Crossroad Auto Sales. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Larry. We'll be right back. And Joe Reichel is next from Damage Control. News Radio. I'm Lillian Wu. Wall Street seeing a rally at the open after a three-day break. The Dow Jones Industrial Average had its worst two-week start to the new year ever last week, thanks to worries over the global economy. Those worries include China's financial and economic turmoil and a slump in crude oil prices. Fox Radio's Tanya J. Powers. The Supreme Court has agreed to...